This meeting of the Littleton Licensing Authority will come to order. Rochelle, would you poll the authority, please? Authority Member Bradish? Present. Authority Member John Cole? Here. Authority Member Gunia? Authority Member Price? Here. Authority Member England? Here. Authority Member Odell? Here. Authority Member Andrew Cole? Here. Thank you. We do have a quorum. Next order of business is the minutes from the uh, previous meeting, which is September. Are there any changes or additions to the meeting from the authority members? You know, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that the minutes be accepted as, I won't say as printed, read, just be accepted. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The minutes are approved. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting? It was my understanding we had a modification. That's right. So we need to remove uh, Karma Bar from the agenda 8D. I make a motion that the agenda be accepted as amended. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The agenda is approved. Next item of business being uh, item number 8A. Uh, finding of probable cause and scheduling. Uh, the first one is A, is Jeshery Corporation doing business as advanced liquors? Well, as you know, local licensing bodies have full authority to enforce state liquor laws by imposing sanctions against licensees for violation of law. In this case, the city is requesting that the authority make a finding of probable cause to believe that Advanced Liquors is in violation of Section 1247901A, which provides it is unlawful for any person to sell any alcoholic beverage to any person under the age of 21. Uh, all three of the cases um, presented tonight under eight of the agenda were a, a part of a routine compliance check. In the case of Advanced li Liquors, LPD sent a 19-year-old in with an ID which was clearly marked under 21. The clerk asked for the ID but then proceeded to sell a six-pack of beer to the 19-year-old. After issuing a citation, the clerk said that he thought there was something unusual about the ID but believed it, w it said 1982 rather than 1992. Do we have any discussion from the board? Pretty straightforward. I think this looks like a pretty clear-cut case. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion for a finding of probable cause. I move that the authority find that there be probable cause to believe that Jesuit Corporation doing business as Advanced Liquors, 7945 South Broadway, Littleton, Arapahoe County, Colorado on Saturday, January 8, 2011 at approximately 6.40 p.m. did violate Colorado Liquor Code and Littleton Municipal Code. Based on said findings, I move a public hearing be set for the ninth day of March 2011 for the purpose of considering the status of said retail liquor license, wherein the above mentioned license may be present to show cause, if any, why its license should not be suspended or revoked and further that notice of these findings and the hearing to show cause shall be forwarded and served to Jesuit Corporation doing business as advanced liquors in accordance with the provision of state law. I have a question. Uh, you said Saturday? Is it, I believe it's Sunday. Um, then I apologize. Yes, it's Sunday. January 8, 2011. Thank you. I'll second that. 
Rochelle, would you poll the authority, please? Authority Member Bradish? Yes. Authority Member John Cole? Yes. Authority Member Price? Yes. Authority Member England? Yes. Authority Member O'Dell? Yes. Motion for uh, finding probable cause is approved and the city will uh, uh, serve the business. Uh, next item of business is uh, All Sports LLC doing business as Total Fine Liquors. I think it's All Spirits. I'm sorry? All Spirits. I thought you said All Sports. Did you say All Spirits? Uh, it is All Spirits regardless of what I said. <laughs> Hopefully, I said all spirits. <laughs> this case, again, involves another compliance check done by the Littleton Police Department. The city is, again, requesting that the authority make a finding of probable cause to believe that the store is in violation of Section 1247-901, Subsection 1A. Again, this provision prohibits the sale of alcoholic beverages to any person under the age of 21. In this case, LPD sent in a, an underage male, 20 years old, into the store to buy a 12-pack of beer, and in this case, he was not requested to present any identification. Authority members have any questions? Any, any discussion or comments? I would entertain a motion. Okay. I'll move that the authority find there is probable cause to believe that All Spirits LLC, DBA, Total Wine and Liquors, 6901 South Broadway, Littleton, Arapahoe County, Colorado, on Sunday, January 8, 2011, at approximately 7.57 p.m., did violate the Colorado Liquor Code and the Littleton Municipal Code. Best, based on said findings, I move that a public hearing be set for the 9th day of March 2011 for the purpose of considering the status of said retail liquor license wherein the above mentioned licensee may be present to show cause if any why its license should not be suspended or revoked and further that notice of these findings in the hearing to show cause shall be forwarded and served to All Spirits LLC DBA Total Wine and Liquors in accordance with the provisions of state law. I second. Please poll the authority. Authority Member Bradish? Yes. Authority Member John Cole? Yes. Authority Member Price? Yes. Authority Member England? Yes. Authority Member O'Dell? Yes. Next item of business, uh, 8C. H&T Incorporated doing business as Columbine Valley Liquor of Littleton, 3615 West Bowles Avenue. This is a similar situation where the city is again requesting that the authority make a finding of probable cause to believe that the store is in violation of Section 12-47-901, Subsection 1A, which prohibits the sale of alcoholic beverages to any person under the age of 21. In this case, there were two incidents I think within a span of 10 minutes, and you have a supplemental report in your um, packet that was given you, to you tonight, which will establish the time of the second incident. In this case, Officer Mullins of the Littleton Police Department first sent a juvenile into the store with a date of birth uh, 19, of 1991, and the clerk looked at his ID and responded, you qualified, and proceeded to sell him a 12-pack of beer. Approximately 10 minutes later, LPD sent in a second juvenile, a different juvenile, who was a 16-year-old, date of birth 1994. In that case, the clerk, I think it's the same clerk, I'll, I'll check that, um, checked the ID and, and said, um, looked at it and said, 1984, to which the 16-year-old responded, yes, yes, it is the same clerk. And the same clerk uh, proceeded to sell him a six-pack of beer. Counselor, I have a question. Would would this be considered for purposes of the authority two offenses? Not in this situation. This is just probable cause to believe that they that 
the two incidences occurred, but it's not two separate charges. Okay. You, you know what I'm getting at in, in terms of any uh, suspension? Would there be one or two? It looks like. Yeah, so when the case comes forward on the show cause, it, there will be two municipal counts in there. Okay. There will be two. Any other questions? Any discussion? No, again, pretty straightforward. Okay, I'd like to make a motion. I move that the authority find that there is probable cause to believe that H&T Incorporated doing business as Columbine Valley Liquor of Littleton, 3615 West Bowles Avenue, Littleton, Arapahoe County, Colorado, on Sunday, January 8, 2011, at approximately 6.40 p.m., did violate Colorado Liquor Code and Littleton Municipal Code. Based on said findings, I move a public hearing be set for the ninth day of March, 2011, for the purpose of considering the status of said retail liquor license, wherein the above mentioned licensee may be present to show cause, if any, why its license should not be suspended or revoked, and further that notice of these findings and the hearing to show cause shall be forwarded and served to H&T Incorporated doing business as Columbine Valley Liquor of Littleton in accordance with the provisions of state law. I'll second. Only authority. Um, just for the record, I believe January 8th was a Saturday, so that's my error on all three of them. It should be Saturday, January 8th. Oh, so he was wrong. The Sunday is correct and the January 8th is incorrect. See, the January 8th is correct, but it should be Saturday, January 8th. You knew that. Oh, okay. So that's my error on that paper. So just for on the record. Bad. Okay. All right. Um, authority member Bradish? Yes. Authority member John Cole? Yes. Authority member Gunia? I'm sorry, Authority Member Price? Yes. Authority Member England? Yes. Authority Member Odell? Yes. So uh, item 8D is uh, the one that we talked about earlier. That. Correct. Right. So we have a finding uh, that there is not probable cause. Or do no, we have to find it's just for removed it? from the agenda, so you're not making any findings. Okay. Didn't exist. <laughs> and the next item of business is item 10A, Rancilio Foods, LLC, doing business as Upper Crust Pizza Company, 151 West Mineral Avenue. Uh, application hearing and before you move forward I just would move to uh, admit the exhibits in this case exhibit a waiver of hearing and objections to process by which neighborhood boundaries and public hearing dates are set exhibit B affidavit of posting of premises exhibit C proof of publication exhibit D liquor authority communication with attachments that's in your packet exhibit E the petition information which we have here for you, and Exhibit F, public hearing sign-in sheet, which Rochelle is grabbing now. Do we have a, a motion to accept? Wait, did you say D? I think she said E. Ah, okay. All right. I make a motion we accept exhibits A through E. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It would be A through F. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Is there an F also? I'm sorry, my mistake. F is the public hearing sign-in sheet. All right, do we have a representative from uh, Rancilio Foods prepared to speak? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brad Fire, and I'm the manager of Rancilio Foods, <clears throat> doing business as Upper Crust Pizza Company. Um, we've actually operated this restaurant for, well, since September 15th. And um, the restaurant is uh, located in the Safeway Shopping Center um, at Mineral and Broadway. And it's approximately 1,600 square feet of uh, dining space with uh, 40 tables, um, mostly uh, two tops and, and uh, booths, and uh, four 
high top tables. The balance of the uh, square footage is uh, dedicated to restrooms and the kitchen area. If I may, um, I'd like to present the authority with both a diagram of the premise as well as a, our, a copy of our current to-go menu, the menu that customers can take with them. Before you do that, um, you just got a liquor license approved in the summer. I did. July or August? Well, my brother did. Okay. So what, what is the reason why you started over with this process? Uh, my brother surrendered the license. The license was in his name. It was. Okay. We'll take a look at those. Crust is primarily a, uh, a family pizza restaurant. Um, the um, training that was completed was done by my wife, who is responsible for the bar area, and um, she went to uh, the alcohol awareness seminar where they um, uh, teach you how to uh, check IDs and all of the rules and regulations with regard to serving alcohol. Uh, she currently works there at the restaurant unpaid, but she is responsible for the bar area. And um, she has, we only have three servers, uh, but uh, she's gone over uh, with those servers everything that she learned in the seminar. And uh, she's rather strict with regard to the rules and regulations that she requires our, our servers to follow. Uh, in fact, uh, we card people who are um, obviously uh, above the drinking age and she likes to see them card just about everybody. I think we'll eventually try to establish a point of, well, you look uh, 40 or more, but we haven't yet. She's been insisting that they, they card just about everyone. So anyway, she completed this class back in August. And I have her letter. I'm sorry, I didn't bring um, enough copies for everyone, but uh, if anyone wants to see it um, uh, for the course completion, I have it. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Um, We, um, if you notice on the diagram, we have a small bar area. It, it's actually a, a four-seat bar. It has four stools at it. And it's towards the back of the restaurant. Um, you, know, you can't even see it from a lot of the area of the restaurant, but from, from the majority of the restaurant you can. It's just a little area where the um, liquor is on display. And, our, and the beer taps are there. And then in the very back of the restaurant, near the, the back door, there's a, um, a storage area, about a 10 by 10 room, that we put a door on and, and um, locked it. So all liquor is stored in that back area that's not on display. So the, any backups of anything, well, the wine in, in, in particular, because you buy it in 12s. But that's all what's not on the, the one bottle on display. The rest of it's all locked up in the back. And then um, to the left is the kitchen area, and obviously that long, narrow area towards the front is the dining area. The, in the storage area, there's, there's the outside door? Uh, 
No, sir, there's some. It, that, that door right there does lead to the back, but that's the, the wall. Yeah, there's a wall there now that, that um, blocks in that little space on the, uh, on the far right. We put a wall up there with the door. Oh, there's no door going to the outside? No, sir. Is this layout essentially the same as it was when you opened the first time? It's identical, sir. Okay. I didn't remember that you had an outdoor patio area in mind the first time. Well, we do. We're going to, as soon as the weather, uh, as soon as it comes into spring, we're going to put a few okay. uh, umbrellas and tables out there on, in the front of the restaurant. So, uh, As I recall from that, uh, my memory of that shopping center, that's one of those wide areas where there's, there's room for a patio. Uh, there is. There's actually, it's nice because they have a, a built-in... Uh, uh, planner box is right. pretty big and, and we would be in between that in the front of the uh, Or the back of the planner box in the front of the restaurant. That's where we plan to put a few tables out and We actually have that in our lease as uh, something that we can do when we get ready to do it You you would have some sort of barrier around the patio area to keep the public from entering well We haven't exactly worked that one out the the um, the um, Design is um, a challenge, but we hope to put up some type of wrought iron that encloses that area, much like the shack did on a much smaller scale. But there's some angles that we haven't quite figured out yet with regard to the planner and and the actual uh, building, the, the front of the building takes a turn there. Mm -hmm. And um, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to engineer that, but we are going to work on it before we put the tables But up. the only way a person can get into that patio area is from inside the restaurant? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, our sales, um, I don't have to estimate it. Uh, I can tell you that our liquor sales are between 15 and 20 percent of our, our um, overall revenue. Um, can I ask you, how long have you been without a liquor license? When was the license surrendered? On uh, December 27th. Okay. Got a visit, and uh, we haven't served alcohol since. So, um, anyway, we, um, <clears throat> we have about tw uh, between 15 and 20%. Um, it, it's not, uh, we're a restaurant. We, um, we have a lot of family business. Uh, we do everything that we can to support the community, which helps to uh, uh, bring in a lot of families. We do everything that we can with Heritage High School today. For instance, we sponsored, uh, they call it mall, mall days, and we sent 20 pizzas to Heritage on behalf of the swim team, and um, they sold every piece that we sent them, uh, which it's kind of surprising because they sold a lot of pizza and they sold it for two dollars a slice and they they raised all that money for the uh, swim team we've sponsored every uh, 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 particular sport at that high school that has asked us to um, um, contribute and, and what you do is uh, they come in and you sponsor one of the kids uh, in the foot on the football team or on the baseball team or on the track team and, and then you're in their program and, and the money that you give them, uh, a percentage of that money um, helps reduce the cost of that sport to the, um, to the athlete. So we've done everyone um, that has asked us, um, there's probably eight or ten different sports that were a uh, program. Excuse me, I, what school are you talking about? Heritage. Heritage, okay. That's the closest high school, and that's the one we picked out to do the, the most thing. Now, although we have done things at Littleton High School as well um, for some of their silent auctions. I guess the point is is that um, we're attempting to develop a reputation in the community as a, as a place that uh, the, uh, our customers feel like they're at home and they want to come visit us because uh, we uh, are part of the community. and. So every opportunity we get, although we don't have much money and we haven't made any money, uh, we make sure that there's uh, funds available when these um, uh, particular opportunities uh, present themselves. We, we do what we can. We've held uh, private parties for the high school. 
um, for some of the teens and, and also the Warriors um, uh, uh, took a Sunday and we closed the doors and let them um, have their banquets at our at the uh, restaurant. If the authority has any questions. Uh, is, um, let me ask you this. Is Christine your wife? She is. Okay. And you mentioned she's going to be working in the restaurant? Yes, ma'am, she uh, does. Okay. Well, I was just looking at her affidavit of, of no financial interest. Is that, do you just, did she just do that to limit her liability? Well, she, um, we, we, neither one of us have, uh, as far as the money that went into it, the money that, that, that we, uh, Primarily, most of the funds came from my father. Um, my brother decided that he didn't want to uh, be part of the restaurant anymore. Um, he had, it's a long story, and I'll, I'll tell you if you want. Anyway, he moved back to Michigan. So I kind of became upper crust by default. Um, so uh, Christine and I have been working there and trying to, to um, to uh, make it work, and uh, uh, there hasn't been any money for for draws or anything. And, the, and the, the money that we put in is money from my other business that I have put in the uh, the restaurant to keep it running um, while we were attempting to grow. So um, she works for free, and I work for free, and we don't uh, we've yet to take a draw out, and and. Um, I just needed to be specific about, I did put money into the restaurant, um, and um, I, I drew it out of a, another company that I had before I um, um, became involved with Upper Crust because we needed it to make payroll or pay bills or whatever. How, uh, how damaging was it? to your business to not have a liquor license since December 27th? It was the only month that we decreased. We took a $7,000 hit in the month of January. So, If it was 15% of the business, that would be a major hit, I would think. It was. It's, some months it, it was as high as 20. I mean, people drink wine with pizza and beer with pizza. We don't sell much. Our liquor sales are really very low. But beer and wine... Mm -hmm. is um is something that accompanies probably 35 40 percent of our diners even with their kids you know and we we get a lot of families in you know they have a glass of wine with uh with dinner or a beer so it was uh it was not uh something that um uh oh, i wanted to happen and i tried to avoid it but um so we'll we uh, just uh, you know try to get past it, I guess. But it was it was a pretty big hit. You do plan on this uh, business becoming self-sustaining, don't you? Well, yes, sir. I hope so. It, it's just that it takes a little while. I I think um, I learned a lot uh, so far and keep learning. But uh, you know, you just don't open your doors and people you know line up. I mean, it takes a while before you establish your reputation and and um, and you know. We really, the only encouraging part of this, uh, because it is the, the repeat and referral and the write-ups that that restaurant is getting. And I don't know if any of you have been in there, but if you have, you know that we provide really good food at a, at a really good price. And so people are reacting to that. And uh, so... If there wasn't that, I mean, because if anyone has ever been in the restaurant business, it's it's more work than I've ever done before. But uh, the, um, the, re the the encouraging thing is that we seem to be um, providing something that people are, are really liking. So, uh, yes, sir, we, we hope. And, and we're getting closer. You know, had we not had that uh, January, I think uh, maybe we would have been close to the break-even point. Your hours of operation are from when to when? We uh, open at 11 every day, except for Sunday. And Sunday we open at noon. And we stay open until 9 o'clock every day, except for Friday and Saturday, which uh, we stay open until 10. And now your wife, you said, runs the bar area? 
she's responsible for the uh, servers, okay. and as such, is uh, who owns. runs the rest of the restaurant? Oh uh, well, I do, sir. Okay, so you do this every day from all day, seven days a seven week. Seven days a week. Yes, do you have plans to maybe hire someone else or to move someone else in some of these areas? When we can, we will. But uh, we have to. Uh, I've hired a, a, a chef, and uh, so a lot of my payroll is committed to keeping him on and um, uh, the result I think is worth it uh, so as soon as we can get to the same to the point of um, of, of um, self-sufficiency and then then we'll, we'll take it the next step further and try to hire uh, some type of manager so that you know we can spend a little time away from the restaurant and your wife you said that taking the uh, some of the training on uh, you know what to do how to check ID and everything like this. they taught her how to even how to tell a fake ID and then so. of course she passed this on but has any of your servers or have you have any plans to send any of your servers or any people that you hire in the future to the formal tips training well um, it has been uh, 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 discussed Christine and I have discussed it and um, uh, um, uh, I think that uh, as soon as uh, we again have reason to we'd be happy to send our we only have three servers anyway but we'd be happy to send them to the class you have three servers and they, they that's for seven days a week all those hours yes sir three people well I you know I, I uh, yes sir that's that's how many we have for the time and, and what we have is two on the floor on our busy nights and then Christine will uh, supervise and wait on tables as well and then um, we don't need more than at this point we don't need more than one um, sometimes supplemented by me or or my or my daughter or something so it's usually family um, that supplements the um, hired employees that we have Tins bar my wife how much uh, how much of your business is takeout and how much are people eating in the restaurant that's a, a, a real nice area because takeout and um, both takeout and deliveries increasing at a faster rate than dining I would say that on some nights um, delivery and takeout is uh, twice that of dine-in we've had people come from Parker to get our pizza your your pizza is an unusual pizza as I recall from the original hearing it's a uh, Detroit Style pizza, I think you referred square to it. Pie. It's a square pizza. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I will say. <laughs> Who so does the delivering? We have um, we have utility men that do dishes and um, uh, help with prep work and then take deliveries. So we have um, two employees that work the back of the, the kitchen area. And then whenever we have a delivery, uh, they go. And when they have two deliveries, I'm the dishwasher so if they're both on the road you know I just fill in in the back and then uh, keep things uh, clean in the back and and and, uh, and do the prep work when they're both on the road unfortunately when we started you know we did two or three a night or something but now some nights we do 18 20 deliveries I, I have a question whose name was that before the 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 liquor license was in an individual's name is okay one managing member which was his brother and now it's Rancilio Foods LLC with one managing member in. I see corporation okay and since both names were not on it originally it couldn't just correct well it could it could have had he not surrendered the license okay. and then he surrendered the license it fails I mean that's the end. So he could have chosen to okay. Yeah, he could have done a transferred change of corporate it. structure, just a change of corporate structure and changed his brother out for him. He didn't want to do that. Okay. But nothing's changed since the original, except for that you've you're in business now. I mean, it's the same drawing, the same um, petition, neighborhood. Everything's needs, the same. Everything well, is the same as we had to do you. a new we had to do a new survey. Right. But uh, everything about the restaurant and its operation is the same. Okay. So everything's the same except one fewer person in the company, which would be your brother. Yes. Okay. It's actually a whole new company that owns it now. Totally different company. 
Ja, want veel jong voelt. But who signed the lease? I mean, the lease hasn't changed, right? Uh, no. Um, well, the lease has changed. Now it's in my name. Okay, well, so you signed Foods a new. Name. You signed a new lease with the. Okay. We just substituted Rensselaer okay. Foods for Upper Crust. Okay. Yeah, the lease is attached. Yeah, and, and I thought I saw that it was the old. Brad Byer is uh, the signature. Okay. Any other questions? Would you like to present your petitions? Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to present Kelly. I think I know how this is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Kelly Peters. Last name spelled P-I-E-T-R-S. And I'm the owner and manager of Esquire Petitioning Services. We did this survey along with the one that we did in August. And um, both of them came back very high. Um, this particular survey, we did a total of 526 door knocks, of which we got 98 residents who signed in support and 44 businesses for a total of 142 people. And that's a total of 98, well, almost 99 percent of those who signed the petition supported the issuance of the hotel and restaurant license. Um, or is it beer and wine? It's beer and wine, is it? No, hotel and restaurant. Um, we did have two residents who signed in opposition. Uh, both, one stated that they had an abhorrence to alcohol, and the other person said there was they didn't they declined to state a reason so when we looked at it on a needs and desires basis it was 142 people in support and zero in opposition so it would be 100 percent in support based on the needs and desires um, analysis a lot of the people are very confused as to why we were out there again. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we tried to explain nicely that it was something that, you know, unfortunately happens sometimes and um, that it's staying, you know, the same restaurant, same pizza, um, nothing will change except for the fact that there's, the brother's gone. And um, they're like, you know, rolled their eyes and said, okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's, it appeared that there is still a strong need and a desire among the adult inhabitants for the issuance of this license. Well, I, I think uh, since since this license was initially approved, I don't think we've opened up any other um, liquor establishments in that same boundary. So the needs have to remain the same unless. Uh, yeah, and it's basically up. not a new license. I mean, you know, it's kind of a hard thing to explain because it is a new license, but it's just sort of replacing the exact same thing um, due to a family you know, disagreement, and that happens. So I do feel that there is need and desire in the neighborhood. And I also have a copy of the last petition's um, summary, if you're interested in looking at, it, at that at all. But uh, I, I don't believe the last petition is applicable to this gentleman. I really relevant, yeah. No, I, I agree with that. Okay. So I brought one just in case, but I didn't think that you, you Excellent know. job as usual. What's that? I said excellent job as usual. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you.
Well, that's all of the pe people who requested to speak, and I think we have all of the information we need. Do we have a motion? Okay. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's going to be my pleasure. All right. I'd like to make a motion that the public hearing be closed and a resolution of the Littleton Licensing Authority be approved, which grants, I really love this name, Rant Rancil Rancil how do you say this? Rancilito? Rancilio Foods, LLC, doing business as Upper Crust Pizza Company, 151 West Mineral Avenue, Suite 109, Littleton, Colorado, a hotel and restaurant liquor license contingent upon approval from the Colorado Bureau of Investigation and the Colorado Liquor Enforcement Division, and based upon the following findings of fact, one, that the needs of the neighborhood are not being met, and two, that it is the desire of the adult inhabitants of the neighborhood that the license be issued. I'll second the motion. Hold the authority, please. Authority Member Bradish? Yes. Authority Member John Cole? Yes. Authority Member England? Yes. Authority Member Price? Yes. Authority Member Odell? Yes. Motion is passed. The uh, application is approved. Congratulations. Uh, I'd like to say I'm, I regret that you had to go through the extra trouble to just continue your business, but appreciate the fact that you did. I think that's going to be a good business in the city, and uh, we wish you the best. <laughs> that would be <laughs> She's never done that before. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next item of business would be item 14, uh, and there is no general business that I'm aware of. Do we have any uh, reports from the staff? I do not. No. Authority members? Yep. Chairperson has none. Uh, there being no further uh, business before the authority, I declare this meeting adjourned.